So today I'm upgrading yet another Lenovo Think Center M93P small form factor desktop PC. And I'm going to be installing the best upgrades I can manage with a budget and with what I happen to have on hand. So if you come across one of these towers, there's some pretty cool options that you can play around with on a good budget and you don't have to spend a ton of money buying the latest and greatest gaming computer as long as you can manage your expectations you'll be okay and I would say this is around $300 Canadian maybe less um, actually I'll put that at around $250 Canadian but sometimes you really gotta look for deals so this tower itself, uh, with nothing but the Intel i5-4570 CPU, uh, 3.2 gigahertz, and everything else like the optical drive, uh, the OEM board, intake fan, CPU fan, and heat sink. Of course, the stock 240 watt power supply. That all came to a total of $94. And that's out of a lot of 18 think centers. So that's how I was able to get a deal. You might find better deals out there if you get lucky or you find this at a thrift shop or something like that. It's a steal though. So we'll be cleaning it up a little bit later on. And I also have one 256 gigabyte SanDisk X300S SATA 3 solid state drive, 2.5 inch to install. That will be our uh, main SSD to boot games from. And I do have other 250 and 240 gigabyte options, but I'm going to stick with a 128 gigabyte Samsung uh, SATA 3 PM851 2.5 inch solid state drive as the main Windows 10 boot drive and also some extra storage space. And I also have the EVGA G4 uh, GT1030 small form factor. Excuse me, Let's start that over. I also have the EVGA G4 GT1030 low profile graphics card, and this is a nice little option. There's one DVI and one HDMI display ports, and it sits at two gigabytes and uh, GDDR5 memory and 64-bit. I'll put a little link to the Tech Power Up website with a little bit more details, but that's a pretty solid performance graphics card for a little tower like this. And finally, I'm going to be installing 16 gigabytes of RAM XL RAM at four gigabyte pieces each. And this is 1600 megahertz RAM. Of course, there are different options. You can upgrade to 32 gigabytes. Um, and this is DDR3 RAM, by the way. But even now, uh, with DDR3 becoming somewhat old, but still very useful, uh, 8 gigabyte sticks come with a premium. Unless you find a really good used deal, you could be surfing eBay for a long time before excuse me, before you find uh, a deal that's, uh, you know, 30 Canadian dollars per 8 gigabyte stick. You might get lucky though, you never know. So anyways, let's open up the tower, take a look inside and start installing everything. Uh, but also before we go on, I should point out one more thing. So in order to install two solid state drives without taking off the connections to the optical drive, you'll have to have an extra SATA cable and what's called a SATA Y power splitter. And it looks like this. I'll just quickly take it out of the bag. Okay, it looks like this. So we'll take the one existing SATA power connection from the power supply, plug this end in, and then that opens up uh, two, two uh, power channels to power two drives. And I'll show you what I mean once I open up the tower. Let's take a look inside.
Okay, just in case you don't know, you might have two uh, Phillips head screws to remove from the back side here. And then once you're um, ready to take the um, panel off, there's a little button that you can depress right here. And you just pull this little tab right here and you're open and ready to go. Okay, so let's take a look inside here. Here's our stock 240 watt, um, 80 plus bronze power supply. And this is uh, deceiving, right? The, you'll totally be able to power that graphics card, uh, two solid state drives, 16 gigabytes of RAM, everything else on the system, CPU, etc. No problem. Um, you know, within the limitations of what we're putting in, you're not really going to be overpowering the system necessarily. You know, you could always try, but anyway. So, in order to get to the motherboard and to start installing the drives, you find this little blue tab right here and you press that down and you're able to lift this whole section up, which allows access to the RAM slots as well as all the cables and different connections to the motherboard. So let's start by first installing the graphics card. And you want to do that first before you install any RAM because it gets a little tight in these small form factor tower cases. I'll zoom in here just one moment. So this plastic shield surrounding the CPU fan That takes up quite a bit of space. Um, I would have to assume it's engineered to have a proper airflow distribution that underneath the heat sink here and drive air outside of the tower like an exhaust. There is an air intake fan right over on this side in the front, but there's no exhaust fan, so I would have to assume that this shield must assist with that uh, beyond the um, fan that's available inside the small power supply which is more just dedicated for the power supply. So anyway, um, I know I s I'm gonna change gears here. I made a mistake. You want to install the RAM first instead of the graphics card. And I messed that up, but as you can see here, there's the uh, dim slot tabs. If those are pressed down, you're not gonna be able to fit the card in like, into the PCI 16 Express slot. It's just not gonna fit. So we'll put the RAM in first. Here's our first four gigabyte stick. You just wanna make sure that you line up the RAM with the DIMM slot and um, make sure the little line on the RAM land, lines up with the DIMM slot. Otherwise, uh, if you're pushing too hard, you might damage something. So just be gentle. Although, you'll find when you do put it, the RAM stick in and seated, you do have to apply some pressure until you hear each, um, until you hear it snap in place. Just like that. There we go. And sometimes you might want to install um, each RAM stick separately, especially if it's used. So that's just a tip. Um, because you might run into a bad RAM stick, you might into, run into some system errors. Usually just to avoid that headache of figuring out which RAM stick is the wrong stick, or the broken, or rather the uh, faulty stick, I usually install one stick at a time in the appropriate DIMM slot, which would actually be the blue one right here. Not the green one, but the blue one. Um, and I'm pointing to, you can start with that one. And then you can boot the machine and let it post and go into BIOS and just make sure everything's okay. However, if it does boot and post and you're able to get into BIOS, of course it is okay. And you'll get a error code that's very noticeable and nothing will turn on, you'll get no display. So in this case, I know all of these RAM sticks work. I've already gone through that process. Um, I can maybe add that as a different video at a future time, which is not a bad idea. But just so you know, if you run into a faulty RAM stick, just uh, testing everything first saves a lot of troubleshooting time. 
You know, you might get lucky and all the sticks are good. But if you're dealing with the used RAM, you want to be cautious. You never know what you're going to get. Or even brand new RAM straight from the manufacturer. There's always a chance that something will go wrong. So there we go. We got 16 gigabytes of 16 uh, 100 megahertz RAM in there, which is pretty cool. All right, so I'm just gonna switch this around so we can see the PCIe 16X um, slot here. And we'll go ahead and install the uh, GT1030 card. So first what you wanna do is find the tab over here, pull that over, there's no screws involved, <clears throat> and line up the express slot with the removable um, piece right here. I, I'm at a loss for words at the moment. I can't <laughs> normally, I can't uh, place what, what it's called at the moment, but we'll, let's call it a metal piece. I'll come back and fix that in post maybe. But anyway, you just want to line that up and take it out. And now we have a slot for the low profile uh, bracket. There we go. For low profile bracket to be installed. All right, so you just want to be careful to line up. You'll see that there's a, a slot right here on the graphics card, and you look down on the PCIe Express slot down here, and there's one slot, and then the rest for the entire card to fit in. So just be careful that you're not trying to squeeze it into something it's not going to fit into. All right, let's put it in. Okay, so we have it seated. I'm just going to say that you just want to gently push down until it snaps in place. And then we'll take this tab and put it back over. And we have a sweet little graphics card installed now. That's pretty cool. It looks very nice. The black shield on the graphics card matches with this black shield on the over the CPU fan and heatsink looks all right. And if you ever want to take it out in case you miss miss a step or forgot to put this RAM stick in, um, there is a little tab down here, and it looks just like this one. So I'll focus in on one second. Okay, it looks just like this tab right here. So I want to push it forward in order to release the card and you don't, you're really going to have to squeeze your finger in and feel around and try to get a good view because you don't want to be yanking this card out of the slot and breaking it. Um, I have been in situations where the tab is broken and getting the card out, removing a graphics card with a broken tab is a little difficult, but not impossible, but difficult. All right, so now we can move on to installing the SSDs. Okay. So first we'll take our SATA Y power splitter and plug it into the existing SATA power connection connection from the uh, power supply. Just have to line it up correctly and plug and play. There we go. And next we'll find an empty slot, an empty port on the motherboard to fit our SATA cable in. So let's just get a better angle here. There we go. So what we have here is, see it um, printed on the motherboard itself. We have the, this cable is attached to SATA 1. So we'll probably make that the boot drive. And the one below it is SATA, I'm going to say it's, Guess it's either SATA 0 or SATA 2. I'm trying to, no, it's SATA 3. Okay, um, SATA 2 is currently plugged into the optical drive. So we'll plug our um, storage SSD into SATA, um, 
our SATA 3 port, and we'll just configure it in BIOS later on. Uh, however, if it's the storage drive, you don't really have to worry about that too much. Uh, the configuration, some BIOS you have to activate drives, like in some older Dell Optiplexes. Um, but here you don't really have to worry about that too much. And you don't really have to change the boot order of the storage drive because you're not going to be booting from it. So we'll just tuck this uh, cable away for the time being and we'll do some cable management later on. But uh, you know what? Once we put this chassis back down and uh, once we put the cover back over, I'm not really going to see the cables anyway. Um, and most uh, PCs manufactured for, especially in the business class, uh, they're not really making them too fancy looking. They look pretty like aerodynamic on the outside. Uh, but for vanity purposes on the inside, typically you just open it up and you see a big spaghetti of cables um, with maybe a couple little wraps attached to the tower case like down here. Um, and a couple little plastic tie wraps just to keep the keep the wires away from different components on the board and especially the system fans uh, but you're not really going to see a lot of like neat cable management that you see in like high-end gaming pcs so anyways let's start by connecting the 128 gigabyte boot drive and for the time being we're just gonna put it right here and later on or momentarily I'm going to take some plastic tie wraps and so that we have the SATA power connection and the SATA cable attached to our boot drive. We'll take our storage SSD, attach the second power connection and the second SATA cable. A nice 90 degree options and we'll plug that in. Okay. So, now we, I don't have any uh, special SSD cases to put into the uh, hard drive caddy here. So what I'm going to do is use two plastic tie wraps instead. Alright, so we're just going to use this plastic tie wrap. So we can hold in the SSDs. And actually, you know what, we'll just use one. Um, I bought these tie wraps. You can get them from dollar stores or hardware stores or wherever. You might see them on a, in an aisle. They're pretty cheap, inexpensive way to fasten things into PC cases. And as I stated before, I'm not really that worried about making it too pretty. I just want it to be functional. I think there'd be a lot of time wasted to make it look really nice. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't do that, and it doesn't mean that I shouldn't do that, or that I shouldn't care. But right now I don't care too much. Maybe I should. So we'll actually just use one tie, tie strap, and um, a solid stage drive actually fits really well. Right underneath the hard drive caddy. Um, you could also fasten one right over here, if you wanted to. And I believe I have in the past. Uh, you know, double-sided tape would also work well for this. But tie wrap works pretty well as well. Okay. Tighten that up. Okay, and I've got a pair of metal snips that are overqualified to cut this little piece of plastic but it's what I have laying around so there we go Let's take a nice little look at that these are fastened in pretty well now and I'm just going to tuck these cables instead of tie them so I'll save all my tie wraps for actual uh, PC builds especially ones with um, glass windows so I should point out one more thing. If you're looking at ordering the SATA Y power splitters, there's two different varieties that you can find. Uh, one with 90 degree 
connections and one without 90 degree. What you want for a tower this size is 90 degree connections because you're going to run into the cables not um, not fitting when you go to put this chassis back down. And I've had that before where I've really had to reef on the side of the tower case just to get, oh, Lodge accidentally got that out, just to make it fit. And at that point you're kind of uh, compromising the uh, connection of the cables to the uh, to the drives and this is especially important if you're installing a 3.5 inch drive um, because that will come all the way out almost to the edge of the tower case so just uh, something to keep in mind purchase uh, 90 degree cable connections they usually cost maybe like a dollar more but it's worth it okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down and there we go see you can't even can't even see any of those cables anymore. And all of a sudden we're looking at a nice and tidy PC. Okay. So I think it's time to boot this thing on. Let's take a look at the back IO panel. All right. So we'll take our USB mouse and plug that into the USB 2.0 keyboard, USB 2.0, and our ethernet cable, because I plan to go right ahead and install Windows 10. So we'll need a internet connection. And you'll see here, this is actually pretty nice. We have four USB 3.0 lined up right here, as well as uh, two USB 3.0 on the front IO panel. Um, if you're not running a graphics card, then we have the option of dual display ports plus a VGA. You can still run dual display without a graphics card, it's no big deal. And the integrated HD, Intel HD 4600 graphics are still not terrible at all. I'm running a M93 in my living room and I have HDMI to display port adapter that carries sound. Uh, the picture's great. And I don't have to worry about having a video card installed to just to do things like stream Netflix and stuff like that. So, here we'll plug in my VGA cable that has a DVI adapter attached to it because my DVI cable on my uh... Oh, hold on. I'll have to get a different adapter. Because this one um, I forget what the classification is, but this particular adapter has four pins surrounding the uh, one flat pin right here and that's not going to work for this adapter I mean for this uh, port here so I do have this adapter hopefully it works see there's not four pins there because we don't have a four pin uh, female end over here so hopefully this adapter works we'll find out right now otherwise we're gonna have to pull down the DVI cable that is currently connected to my uh, NOS, my home PC NOS, which is just right up here. Okay. Well, let's try it out. You'll power it up. See if we get any error beeps. I think we're good. So first boot. And you want to keep hitting the enter key on the keyboard. So we have the option to get the uh, bio splash screen. All right, what I'm guessing is that this adapter is not gonna work because we got the beep, but we have no display. So, I'm going to have to come back in a second and we're going to have to pull down that DVI cable, much to my dismay. All right, so what I did instead of pulling down the DVI cable was find my 
I had a loose uh, DVI connection already just on the floor connected to my little 15 inch uh, diagnostic monitor over here on my workbench on my other workbench I guess I should say so looks like we're good to go so I'm gonna take the camera around and we'll just do uh, we'll talk a little bit briefly about what we need to do before we boot Windows on USB. So we have our system summary. Just double check. All our RAM is uh, re recognized. 16 gigabytes at 1600 mega megahertz. Um, there's our CPU info, the i5-4570. And of course, uh, we see here there's our 128 gigabyte SSD optical drive, and there's our SanDisk 256 gigabyte SSD. So we are, of course, good to go there. Let's check the system time and date. Do we have to change that? No, it looks okay. 12 13 p.m. Uh, Saturday, September 4th, 2021. Okay, now let's scroll over to startup. We're not going to worry about anything else at the moment. Um, so you go to primary boot sequence and see here we have the, that's good, the 128 gigabyte SSD is uh, number one there as expected. But we also want to put the USB hard drive way down here. We want to add that to the boot order second in line so we don't have to well so we can boot from usb that's pretty much it so as we see here x excludes includes the device to boot we'll hit x and there we go all right so we have our windows 10 pro 64-bit loaded on this usb drive i'm going to plug it into the back of the computer and We'll boot up again, and I'm just going to show you one little thing that I do in command prompt every single time that I install Windows. And then we'll just move on to the uh, results afterwards. And I should also mention that before we're done with BIOS, you want to hit F10 so we can save configuration and exit. Uh, before we do that, plug in the USB. Because then the PC will restart and we can hit F12 or excuse me, hit enter. We hit enter to get our splash screen that came up really fast. Hit F12 to get into, uh, oh, <laughs> my bad. We'll enter setup again because I think USB hard drive was the wrong option. Yeah. USB key, my bad. Let's go to USB hard drive, hit X to exclude it. And we'll go down to USB key and hit X to include that. There we go. I will hit F10 again, save. We'll hit enter to get our splash screen or a menu after the splash screen. Hit F12. And we will click on UEFI, not legacy, but UEFI. And now we'll install Windows. All right, so once you've booted the Windows 10 uh, USB.ISO and uh, entered in your product key or have it automatically activated, you want to click I accept next and custom and as you can see here um it looks like the solid state drives had something installed on them so what i like to do you could do this in a couple different ways but i just really like using command prompt because it's in the long run it's easier um, so at this screen, you can hold down shift and hit F10. 
and that will pull up command prompt. And once you're in command prompt, I'll just zoom in here really quick. Oh, oh it's about as close as we'll get, unfortunately. Okay, so I want to get into a uh, disk partition, um, disk management. So we type D I S K P A R T. Hit enter. And once we're in disk part, we type list space disk. Enter. And here we have our disk zero. 1 and 2, and in case you're following along from earlier, this of course um, is the SATA port 0, 1, and 2 on the motherboard. So we have our 128 gigabyte SSD right here, 256 gigabyte, and there's disk 2 is actually our USB. Um, so you don't want to do anything with that. So we'll type select disk 0. Hit enter, and this is where we can type clean to format the disk. I don't know those I know those two terms don't exactly go together, but in this case I usually just clean. And that'll clear off the whole drive. It happens super fast. Um, so we have disk one now. We type select disk one. Enter, and we also type clean. And enter, we have disk part succeeded in cleaning the disk. We'll type exit. Exit once more. And we'll hit refresh. Oh. Didn't have the camera tilted down, but the refresh button is pretty easy to find. See my uh, mouse icon hovering over it. So we already have the 128 gigabyte SSD selected. Of course, you can select either one that you want to install Windows to. In this case, it's the smaller capacity SSD. And we'll just hit next. There we go. We'll go through the whole install process. It's fairly easy. And then we'll come back and well, you won't see me go through it, but you'll uh, hear me talking about it after it's installed. Okay, actually one quick tip before we wrap up. We want to initialize the uh, second solid state drive. So to do that, we hit the Windows key and type disk management. Hit enter. And usually it'll automatically pick pop up. And here's where we can initialize and assign a drive letter path to the uh, 256 gigabyte solid state drive. So for this case, we'll hit MBR, hit OK. And this blacked out space here is the solid is the uh, storage drive. Right click and hit New Simple Volume. Next, next. Uh, we'll stick with D. You can change it to any letter you want. Hit next. And next and finish. That'll quickly format the drive. And there we go. It's set up and ready to go. Start saving stuff to it and running stuff to it as well. Alright, so we're back. We have Windows 10 installed. Um, what I like to do with a fresh Install is, of course, a run updates. So we hit the Windows key, type updates. And actually, before we do that, we'll click on File Manager and eject the, and we'll eject the USB with Windows 10. Let's set that off to the side. And then we'll go ahead and run updates. So that's pretty much it. That goes for the install. Uh, of course, the graphics card seems to be running just fine.
Oh, hit retry on that. Whoops. Okay, so we'll run all the updates and get Windows good to go. Uh, for some reason, it says we could not connect to the update service. We'll try again later. I'm not going to worry about that right now. We'll. If that becomes an error for me to troubleshoot for some reason, I'll look into that and start this right, video so back just up. Just a quick update on not being able to update Windows 10. As you can see here, I do have updates running now. And what it took was taking out the GT1030 graphics card plugging back into the uh, OEM mother or plugging back into the uh, motherboard, my VGA cable, and setting my graphics card off to the side. So that allowed us, even though I uh, manually downloaded the driver for the GT1030, um, I found that uh, removing it and then running, trying to run Windows Update worked. So. Uh, the system works perfectly fine otherwise, so what I'll do is finish updating Windows and then I'll reinstall the card, just make sure everything's running okay, and I'll continue testing out the card and the system and games and stuff like that and we'll see if we encounter any problems, but otherwise that's a quick fix. Uh, so I'll be reinstalling the card later as it does seem to work fine otherwise. So hopefully that helped you out. And let me know if you have any alternate solutions in the comments below. Alright, so just a quick recap. I've updated Windows, run all the updates, and I have reinstalled the GT1030. As we see here, it's recognized as the main display adapter. It's also showing up in Task Manager. Um, so I think we're good to go for now. Um, it's really hard to say if problems will arise in the future. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. If you have any uh, advice to share, leave it in the comments below. Another upgraded Lenovo Think Center M93P small form factor desktop PC. Featuring a front I.O. panel with USB 3.0 times 2 microphone, headphone, in and out, intake fan, optical drive. As for the upgrades, we have a EVGA GeForce GT 1030 DDR5 2GB 64-bit graphics card, 16GB of DDR3 1600MHz RAM, 128GB uh, SSD, and a 256GB SSD as well. Uh, here's the rear I.O. panel of the card featuring an HDMI port and DVI port, further audio ports, RJ45 Ethernet port, 4x USB 3.0, 2x USB 2.0. On the motherboard we have 2x display port, VGA and serial port. There's the 240 watt stock power supply. On to some game examples. Here's Skater XL. Averages uh, 40 to 60 frames per second on high to low graphics settings. And we also have Dead by Daylight, which averages around 40 to 60 frames per second on medium to low graphics. Apex Legends, which averages around 60 frames per second on medium graphics. In 
Inside the supply bin, you will find a weapon and ammo. Arm yourself. And golf it averages 60 frames per second on high graphics. And Poyo Poyo Tetris averages 60 frames per second on high graphics. So this is a showcase of how the ThinkCenter M93P operates with the CT1030 graphics card installed and all the other upgrades. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what you can do with your tower. Have a nice day.